Welcome back to the Watercolor Journey Painting Challenge. Hi, I'm Chris, your host for this challenge, and this week we're going to go over just about every artist's favorite subject, color. I'll talk to you about color palettes and some easy ways to create them for your projects. Let me share what I call the no-fail color palette formula. It's a combination of two cool colors, a neutral, and two warm colors. If you don't know what that means, let's break it down. Cool colors are blues, greens, and violets, and warm colors are reds, oranges, and yellows. These are the colors that make up the basic color wheel. Neutrals are non-color colors, like brown and gray. They help ground any color palette, give the eye a place to rest, so the colors don't get too busy. But that doesn't mean you have to use a neutral in every single color palette. However, while you're learning, this will help you keep your color palettes balanced. So blue will be my cool color. My warm colors are going to be this terracotta, which is brown mixed with a bit of orange, light peach, which is a watered down orange, and yellow ochre, which is yellow mixed with brown. My neutral will be this medium gray, which will act as a balance to the blue gray I'm using. You may have noticed I, I've already broken the rules of this formula by only using one cool color and three warm colors, but it's still balanced. And this is a color palette that I love. It works well, and as an artist, you can break rules. Once you understand them a bit better, you'll start to see how to use your artistic license to come up with your own beautiful color palette. If you don't understand how any of this works yet, I'm not going to have time in this short video to give you a complete lesson on color, but I am working on something for you to help you with this, which I'll be keeping you posted on. I was so happy when Pantone selected Peach Fuzz as the color for 2024, because I know I can incorporate this into my current brand color palette. It's a bit different than the light peach I'm using, so I'm excited to use it this year. If you're not watching this video in 2024 though, please keep in mind, it's still a gorgeous color and whether it's the current color of the year or not, you can still use it and enjoy it anytime. If you're not familiar with Pantone, they are an international color institute that informs industries like fashion, home decor, wedding, auto design, and so much more on what colors are relevant to use for their products. The color texts work really hard to define what times we live in and match colors that define or complement that era. For example, during 2020, the color of the year was classic blue, which was a soothing and comforting color at a time of international chaos and confusion. Every color they select for each year tells the story of what's going on at that time. So it's a pretty interesting resource and a very fascinating science to learn about. You can learn more about them at Pantone.com and see what kinds of color tools they offer to help designers and artists all over the world. They have been a trusted resource for color palettes and single colors alike since the 1960s. As a surface designer, I can use Pantone to match my colors so any companies I happen to be working with I will be guessing what colors I'm using. Pantone acts as an international color language translator in a way, taking the confusion and guesswork out of big projects where color is so important. They also have a really fun Instagram account where they match colors with objects that creates so much inspiration. And that leads me to color psychology. Each color has a different meaning and evokes different kinds of feelings. In general, here are some basic colors and their meanings. Red symbolizes passion, orange symbolizes positivity and energy, and yellow symbolizes warmth. Green is a symbol of nature, and blue is very calming. So of course, those meanings differ depending on what culture you're in. For example, the Western world, white symbolizes purity and hope and cleanliness, and in the Eastern world, it symbolizes death. So as you use color, you might want to pay attention and do a bit of research to see how your colors will be affecting others, depending on the scope and purpose of your project. We discussed the color wheel, the no-fill color palette formula, some color psychology, Pantone.com, and you can see that color is a vast topic and it deserves way more time than what I can give you today but at least this gives you a sample and hopefully ignites you to discover it more. I can't wait to see what colors you choose for your projects. Will you be using multiple color palettes throughout the year or sticking to a single set of colors during this entire challenge? 
I'd love to hear about it in the comments. I also have a PDF download where you can find a cover sheet for the challenge, a guide for the tools and materials I promised you last week, and the no-fill color palette formula so you'll have resources to refer back to as you gather your tools and choose your colors for your projects. Feel free to start a binder or folder that you can add to as I share more PDF resources with you during the challenge. You can build a lovely workbook that you can use as a reference for any of your projects you're working on going forward. Well, that's it for lesson two of the Watercolor Journey Painting Challenge. If you're watching this lesson, but you haven't joined us in the challenge yet, you'll find a link in the description to get signed up for all the goodies. And you can click the image on the screen now to watch these lessons from the beginning. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, I would so appreciate it if you would hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, and tap the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos as they come out. And I will see you in the next lesson where we'll actually mix some color together. See you soon.